Great. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining our webinar. Uh, today, um, we're going to talk about our old reality. Uh, and the old, rep old reality represents uh, a scenario where the economy is doing well, our teams have all the tools they need to perform their jobs, uh, and it is a reality where we really aren't impacted by natural disasters, uh, and obviously the economy is doing great. Uh, we are now in a new reality. The new reality is the situation where the fin our financial markets aren't doing very well, uh, global so supply chains are interrupted, uh, and the economy is contracting. Uh, you can look at this a couple of different ways. We're looking at it as the new reality is an opportunity for change, uh, where an improvement in processes and systems could potentially strengthen your organization uh, and make it more immune to external economic factors. Uh, next slide, Ilya. I want to introduce you to our team members. Uh, Ilya Budimir has over 10 years experience implementing and consulting NetSuite. He's uh, recognized uh, within the industry as a NetSuite innovator, and he's a certified NetSuite consultant. Uh, my name is Judd Helenza. I'm a client manager here at AlphaBold. Uh, I have over 10 years experience working to manage uh, customers' expectations, and I'm committed to serving customers and maintaining long-term relationships. Uh, last but not least is Olivia Johnston. Uh, Olivia has about five years managing customer expectation. She specializes in digital marketing and sales. She heads our West Coast, uh, our West Los Angeles office, and she has a dog named Bear. Next slide. Uh, this is our meeting agenda for today. Uh, think of today's session as an attempt to answer three major questions. Uh, are you managing your new team differently today than compared to three months ago? Um, how will the new reality affect your operations? That is, can you as an organization easily scale and adapt to the changes forced upon you by these new realities? And last but not least, uh, do you have access to all the KPIs and reports that may affect your business? And do you trust them enough to make important business decisions fairly rapidly with the clarity that you need to make those decisions. Uh, Ilya and I will try and provide some answers by walking you through uh, some NetSuite functionality that can improve your team's collaboration, make your operations leaner and more efficient, and lastly, enhance your uh, reporting. After the presentation, we'll open it up to questions if you have any, and in the end, we'll wrap up the session with a quick conversation on how uh, we at AlphaBold can help your organization. Okay, let's talk about team uh, management. Uh, the old reality. Um, in the old days, we all had to come to the office. We had access uh, to our uh, backend system, um, and we would access customer information and issue print and then mail invoices uh, to our clients. Um, we were missing documents or we would like to find out more about a specific customer issue, it was easy to reach out over our desks or across the office and ask a team member for more information. We were all in the office together and everyone was easy to reach and approach. Uh, security obviously was less of an issue. All the IT systems were managed in the office and were protected and maintained by the on-premise IT staff. Uh, who supported us and obviously whose company we enjoyed. Uh, in the new reality, Ilya, in the new reality. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Home, uh, in the new reality, online access requires robust, rapid systems with a state-of-the-art security uh, that will protect your data and your users. Uh, question for you is, do you have such a system and are you ready for this seismic shift? Uh, since you are not on site or in the office, how do you communicate with your coworkers? What does this communication look like? How do you keep track of open tasks and how do you stay on top of email, Slack, phone calls, et cetera? You will admit it was a bit easier to deal with these problems in the past. 
after this current economic downturn, your team probably is smaller and your work became more complicated and the volume of tasks became more difficult to handle. Finally, in the online world, how do you ensure that your communication is secure? Your systems are secure, your intellectual property is secure. Do you have all the systems in place to protect your business? Uh, Ilya. Thanks. Uh, let's talk about how NetSuite can address our new reality when it comes to collaboration and team management. Uh, NetSuite is a platform that makes online collaboration and communication pretty easy. Uh, there's no accessibility issues. It's pretty much accessible from anywhere in the world that has internet, including China. Uh, it's versionless. That is, uh, it automatically upgrades twice a year. So that means no painful system upgrades. Uh, it's a private cloud environment, hence it's very secure. It integrates with various video conferencing application and business systems, for example, Zoom and WebEx. And NetSuite provides robust, up-to-the-moment analytics, and all the reports are in one system. Finally, NetSuite provides a native ticketing and case management system. Ilya, can you walk us through a couple examples, please? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Judd. So what I'll do, what I'll do the, the, today is I'll uh, show you the first demo, and uh, the purpose of this demo is to to show how returns are handled in NetSuite. So RMA is essentially, uh, in the old reality, uh, th there were various systems and people that were involved in this process. Uh, NetSuite uh, simplifies the process and manages manages it in a single platform. So I'm going to play this video and kind of walk you through it slowly. All right, so I'm going to start this, uh, this uh, demonstration by um, submitting a ticket from an online case form. And this case form, form is hosted in NetSuite completely, so it was built in NetSuite. Uh, there's no need for any programming and coding. It's very easy to set up and expose the right fields. So right now, I'm John Smith, and I will be submitting a ticket for the product that I purchased from this company. Okay? So I'm going to find the product, the uh, Dell monitor, and um, I will uh, enter the message. So device is not working, won't boot. And I will submit this form. Uh, so as soon as you submit the form, you can be re redirected to your home page. And NetSuite does that natively for you. So you can redirect anywhere you want. And what I'll do now is I'll log into NetSuite system as a customer service agent. So this is the dashboard that the customer service agent would see. This is uh, something we call a reminder portlet where I can see a notifications and alerts, right, as a customer service agent. So um, I have one case to respond to, so I'm going to click on this reminder. So as soon as I click on it, the case, uh, the ticket opens up, and this was actually submitted from the form you saw earlier. Uh, all the information is there. The email address is there. And the message is also at the bottom, as you can see. I'm going to open up the message. So this is the item that uh, the ticket was uh, submitted about. So now I have that information. Uh, so let me speed up this video a little bit. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I will submit a ticket or sub submit a task for the, uh, for the AIR agent. So I'm going to click a task. In the calendar, we'll assign it to our uh, AR um, clerk, Connor Avery. So I'll put the priority on the task. 
and then I'll enter the, the message in a message box about the problem that the customer is experiencing. So we'll ask here that the AR agent creates the return authorization after the investigation. Now what I can do is I can um, assign or select different records that pertain to this customer. So first I'm going to select the company that this is for, or the contact information on the customer side. Uh, I will link it to the case that I created. And there I'll see all the, the open transactions for that customer. So I'm going to relate it to this particular order as I know that this is the last order for, for this customer. So I'll make uh, the air agent's life easier. Everything will be in that task. So I'll put a title as well. Because that is a required field. As you can see, there's, there's a little asterisk there. Makes that field required. So I'm going to save the task. Right. So uh, this is done now. So what I can do, I can log in as the AR agent. And again, I'll, I'll try to speed up things a little bit. Right. So now I'm logged in uh, as an AR agent. This is the information that pertains to um, accounts receivables. Um, now, different companies, you know, for different companies, the RMA can create it by customer service. In this particular case, it's the AR agent who does it. Uh, the task comes in in, the, in my calendar portlet. Um, I open up the task, and I see it was directed to me. It was assigned to me, essentially. Um, and the related information is right in the related records tab. I can see what, what this pertains to. It's the sales order. Um, I see the information there as well, some information. I see the company. I see the contact as well. So if I go to the sales order, I can see the item. That's my Dell monitor. And the next thing I will do is I will create return authorization right there from the sales order. So this, this transaction is simple. Everything is pre-populated already. Um, I will just uh, save this transaction. I'll be good to go. Uh, in the communication tab, I can, however, also send a message to the client. So in this example, you know, I can enter the email or this email can, can be sourced from the customer record. Uh, I can already have messages pre-populated in there uh, that are ready to go for any return authorization. This is an example of one. So as soon as I save this return authorization, the email will go out. And again, you don't have to kind of manually do this. You could, but you can also um, you you can also merge. You, we have um, very sophisticated HTML layouts that you can merge with with data on the record, um, and those can be attached as PDF documents and sent out. So that is also possible. So as soon as I uh, save this return authorization, it will go back to the client. and then the client will be able to ship the product back to us so that we can perform the receipt. Now, the receipt is not part of this, uh, uh, this person's functionality or duties, so he will not process that. Another, another person in the company will do that. Um, so um, I think that's, that's the entire process that I wanted to show you. Uh, what, what you would uh, really end up doing at the end is uh, flipping this task to complete it. Okay? And that would be the end of the process. And I think one of the important things here to mention, Ilya, is that we're handling all of this in a single system. This isn't different right. silo applications. It's all being handled on NetSuite, in NetSuite. Right, right. And any, and any change to the record will show on everybody's screen, right? 
everybody's accessing the same data. Um, so, so everything is in real time, as you said it. Yeah, it's not waiting for the end of the day for a batch update. It's it's handling now. It's happening now, and it's reflected. Right. right. Do we have any questions in a panel by any chance before we proceed to the next uh, next slide? No, we don't, Ilya. You're good. Okay. Uh, so, Jeff, take it away. Uh, let's talk about uh, operations. Um, this is a big part of everybody's business. Um, and in uh, in the old days, you could afford to not be efficient. Uh, today, you can't. Uh, really, the key question here is how efficiently are you operating? Um, the way we used to handle things, uh, you know, a lot of people worked with a decentralized inventory. Uh, companies would have difficulties uh, centralizing their inventory processing. That is, if you have multiple warehouses and you run your business in QuickBooks, um, how are you consolidating your inventory data uh, in Excel? Also, does your company have a sophisticated warehouse management system that integrates with your accounting and order processing system? Uh, if not, how available is the process to tie them together? Are you doing that manually? Um, some companies generate uh, invoices in Excel. Sometimes it takes them 30 minutes to create them and, eat them out and email them out to uh, their clients. Uh, how much does this inefficiency cost you uh, and your business? Um, we had a client who was running on QuickBooks. It took them on average 21 days to close the books. Uh, that is reconcile cash and inventory. What does it cost you not to be able to close the books in a timely manner? Um, managing expenses and payables in QuickBooks or other online, um, or excuse me, other on-premise systems, you tend to use other online applications for procurement of office supplies or raw materials. Uh, these expenses are decentralized and difficult to consolidate, obviously. At the end of the month, it is very difficult to track all the expenses and reconcile them against the company's bank statement. The question here is, what is the impact of not being able to manage your experience, your expenses in an efficient and accurate manner? Uh, sales forecasting. Do you know what's in your pipeline? Is it accurate? How do you manage your sales forecasts? Uh, what does it cost you not to have clear visibility into your sales pipeline? Um, and finally, productivity issues. Without a centralized real-time system, how does uh, how do team members get the information that they need to be productive? On the manufacturing side, uh, the production manager would print a traveler, bring it to the shop floor, and put it in the bin. These are obviously some rudimentary examples, but they illustrate what can happen. Let's say the ink runs out of the printer. The entire process becomes delayed. The manager must replace it while the bin on the production floor is empty. Employees on the production floor would have no way of knowing what's happening with the open work orders and they'd be waiting for instructions or would just be looking around or doing something in the office. The point is, is that they're waiting. Uh, this reduces productivity and it introduces delays into production and product delivered. Uh, the new reality. In the new reality, companies must be lean, obviously. The competition, especially during the time of crisis, is relentless. And as we know, the customer base is typically severely reduced. The key premise here is do more with less. A lot of us experience employee layoffs. At the same time, we're held to new high standards and commitments. OK, what does that look like? In this new reality, you can excel by applying the following when it comes to your operations. Your business must be able to handle a serialized inventory, various costing methods, and real and virtual locations. It must be able to provide warehouse management capabilities. It needs to be able to connect with a WMS system and 3PL solutions. Say goodbye to Excel when it comes to container management. Your system must be able to manage inbound shipments and give you the ability to allocate your inventory based on a unique and constantly changing demand for your product. The times have changed. Every second counts. All of the information and processes should be readily accessible and executable online. For example, if you need to print a picking ticket, 
you should be able to send the job to your printer from home. Also, you should have a WMS system that will allow you to schedule and automate way picking and printing of various labels uh, that must be included with your packaging. Hours are lost on these manual processes. Eliminating these steps will result in quicker fulfillment, uh, quicker fulfillment and happier customers. Uh, Month-end closing in the cloud system should be and is quick and simple. Ilya will demonstrate later how easy it is to run uh, to sequence of events during a month-end close in the system. The quick and efficient process through a simple follow checklist uh, can cut the month-end close to as little as two to five days. Two to five days. Modern systems such as NetSuite have sophisticated expense management functionality. Employees can submit their expenses via NetSuite's native mobile app. These are automatically routed for approval and a centralized reimbursement flow is available in the system to ensure that nothing is missed and that the employees are reimbursed properly. As you can tell, everything is in one place. There is no need to manage separate application and disparate processes. Every business system needs Salesforce automation where your Salesforce team can build, forecast, and manage quotas relative to their sales pipeline. NetSuite as a suite provides this functionality and gives the management a high level or detailed insight into their sales pop, uh, pipeline. Everything needs to be paperless. Invoices are emailed to customers, production work order appear on a work center monitor when the order is ready for assembly, the warehouse staff processes the orders that are ready for fulfillment, and shipping through their handheld devices. The queue is automated and there is no need to walk across a facility to pick up uh, picking tickets. Ilya. Thank you, Jed. Uh, so the next uh, demo is really focused on operations. Uh, so let's look at the operations in NetSuite. All right, so uh, I'm logged in as the warehouse operations clerk or warehouse manager. Uh, what I'm showing you here is the reminders portlet. Uh, so everything that uh, the warehouse manager needs to do that day uh, will show as an alert in the reminders portlet. So here we can see orders to receive, uh, any containers that we need to create, etc. cetera. Uh, this, reminder can, uh, this reminders portlet can be adjusted uh, by any user. Uh, as you can see on the left side, we have standard and custom reminders that we can, we can set and use. And all of them are preloaded, so you don't have to worry about uh, about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this item spending fulfillment report uh, that I can just add as a shortcut to my uh, dashboard. So uh, here I can adjust the, the location I want to look at. So let's say my first U warehouse, US1, I can review it. Um, I can then see um, all the items that are pending fulfillment for that day or that week. Uh, I can collapse the information, I can expand, and I can see the, the total number there. So next, so I'm going to close this. Next, I'm going to show you a back order report. So remember, uh, we talked about that Dell monitor earlier. So I want to show you here that uh, it appears that that Dell monitor is showing on my inventory back order report that I can access right here. Okay. So I can also have alerts that will show me this information as well. And I can see uh, that I have a back order of 20 units from my location, US1. Right? So I'm going to close this report. And you see I'm opening all these uh, reports in, in new tabs um, so that I don't lose the information that, that's, that's uh, relevant to me or that, been, that I was working on. So right now I went to the order item screen. And this is where you typically, if you set up items correctly, you will go here and uh, you would you would make purchases because the system would tell you what you need to purchase. And I can see that my preferred stock level for the item is 60 units. Um, so that that is uh, that is my T4 server actually. It's not the Dell computer um, or Dell uh, monitor. So what I did is I clicked on uh, create purchase order, and there's a job that starts and generates a PO for me automatically. I could have 
uh, open that, uh, you know, I could have opened a PO uh, manually and created it, but this process just generates it automatically for me based on, based on the uh, order item screen data. Um, so right here I can I can see what's going on. This is my PO. I can double check and I can validate the rate, the quantities, the location. So the next step would be to add this PO to my container. So let's say um, maybe I have this PO and several other POs that I want to add to a container and ship from overseas, right? Um, so that is the next step. I will create a container record and then add the PO to it. So here for I'm going to add the, uh, the document number, so the container number. And this can be also auto-generated. Uh, but I'm going to use a vessel number as a, I'm going to use a container number. And then I have also a vessel number field as well. So here I can en enter the expected ship date, the expected delivery date, and this is high, highly configurable. You can add as many fields as you want to this uh, transaction or this record, very easy. So now I'm gonna look up for my vendor, Emerald Computer Systems, and I'm gonna pick the order that I or, or created earlier. So I'm gonna view the lines on that order. So there's only a very simple, only one line. So this is the quantity that's expected. I will save this. And I'll be ready to go when I click on Mark in Transit But So there are other things that you can do here, but for the simplicity's sake, I will just receive this inbound shipment when the, when the shipment arrives at, the, at, the, at, our, at our warehouse or at our port. Um, so right here, I can receive the, um, the PO directly from the container. And I don't know if you saw earlier, but there was a reminder to receive the container. So you can do that as well from the reminders portlet. So there are many ways to do things in NetSuite. Um, so the process started. Um, I can refresh this. And now the receipt is completed. There are no errors. Uh, and I can review that item receipt. So that's the PO, and this is the item receipt. So now I'm going to log in as the uh, sales person or sales manager. And this dashboard is suited for the sales manager. So they see everything that, that is required for them to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look up my customer. I'm going to go to their dashboard. See how quickly I can go to the dashboard of the customer and see whatever is happening to that customer at this point. All right? So I have some KPIs in here that, that I can review. Then I can scroll down and um, generate a sales order. So if I do it from the dashboard, all of the, all of the information is, is pre-populated on my sales order. Um, and then I can complete it right there on the spot. So I'm going to pick my location. And then I'm going to pick that, that server. I'll look for that server. And I'm going to look at the availability of the server. And now we'll uh, introduce a concept of available to promise in a second. So this is my uh, available quantity 64. Uh, this is the quantity that, that the customer wants to purchase. And then uh, take a look at this expected ship date. So uh, this is the, the, the expected, uh, the expected uh, date uh, for, when, uh, for when the customer wants the, the product delivered to them. Okay? And then there's a little icon next to it, um, and this is available to promise functionality that allows me to kind of scan the supply and uh, forecast when the product will be available based on a quantity that I enter. So for example, here, if I enter quantity of 100, I know that it will be available on August 21st. And there are other parameters here that I can track. 
So quantity such as quantity of hand, quantity available, quantity permitted, lead time for the product. So all of that information is available uh, on this screen, and there's a separate report that looks similar to this that, that you can review uh, outside of this uh, um, transaction. So if I add this and I save it, and the next step in the process is the fulfillment, the shipment of the product. Um, typically, the sales manager won't be fulfilling the product, so I'm going back into uh, warehouse manager role. And now um, I see completely different reminders and portlets. If I refresh it, um, I can see um, that I have nine orders to fulfill. So this is something that we'll be doing every day. Um, here in this example, I'm going to look for that specific order. Um, let's say the um, sales manager asked me to process that first. So I will go there and process that order. So I'm going to show you how to bulk fulfill this, but uh, it's an option. So you can, you can click on this and you can bulk fulfill it. Typically, this is not how things will be done, but I just want to show you all the, all the, the possibilities here. So you can actually select the right status of the fulfillment, uh, select the line that you need fulfilled, and process it in one shot. And there's a back-end process that works in a back-end. Um, and as soon as it's done, you'll be able to review that fulfillment. So there you go. We can open that fulfillment. There's zero errors. That's our sales order, and this is our fulfillment. So this is shipped. And again, I didn't cover a lot of other things that you would need to enter there, packaging, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is just a short, short demonstration of how fulfillments are done. So now if I log back in as a sales manager, um, I can look at all the open orders. So that's available for me in a tile portlet. So this is, this is the report. So I can see uh, that that order is pending billing. So it's been fulfilled. So I can process it now. So I can see it on report. I can have reminders set up so that um, the orders that I'm su supposed to, let's say, invoice come to me. Um, I know that, you know, in this case, the sales manager will be doing invoices. Uh, in other organizations, it may be the function of the AR department. Uh, so in this case, uh, myself as a sales manager, I will click on bill and create the invoice for this order. So as you can see, everything is kind of linked and streamlined and easy to use. Um, it looks great, Ilya. Yeah, this is great. All right, so this is the invoice. Um, I will validate the information. And uh, the next thing I can do is I can email that, that invoice to, the, to my customer. Again, as I said before, we can email it using the messages that are within, within this, uh, this invoice uh, record. Or we can um, send a, attach a PDF file to the customer. And I'm going to show you shortly what that, what that PDF file looks like. So when I click on save an email, the email pops into my inbox. I'm not going to show it to you, but it will come into my inbox if I'm a customer. Uh, and then I'm going to speed this up a little bit so I can show you the invoice, what, what it looks like when printed. So if I click on print here, This is what the typical layout looks like. And you can do, really, you can do anything you want with this. And it's so easy to work with it. So I'm going to stop it here. And I'll let you, uh, let you take over, Judd. Thanks, Ilya. Uh, 
I want to talk about how you analyze uh, your business, that is business analysis, and what that looked like in the old days versus what we're showing you today. Uh, in the old days, reporting was more of a guessing game. As mentioned before, accurate inventory tracking was difficult, and it was difficult to determine accurate inventory profitability. As a result, companies were either overstating or understating their profits. Uh, gross margins nicely ties into the last point. In the old days, it was difficult to calculate gross margins. Uh, the collection process in the old reality was also difficult. Invoices, statements, and notices would be mailed to the clients. It was difficult to record and maintain notes on the current status of receivables. In addition, your DSO, that is your day sales outstanding ratio, uh, obviously would be high. This indicates that your customer base was either a uh, credit problem or and uh, your company has difficulties with collection. Ultimately, without accurate reporting and the highly needed visibility, maintaining a good DSO would be very difficult. Finally, demand and supply planning is difficult and inaccurate, resulting in back orders, which leads to loss of customers. What does a new reality look like? Uh, no more guessing because it's real-time reporting. That is not batch reporting, but true real-time reporting. Accurate inventory reports, real-time gross margin reporting, reduce DSO, we're talking 5 to 20%, and improve demand and supply planning. Ilya, you want to walk us through some examples? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. All right, so this is our third demo, and it really focuses on reporting and the analytics, really. Uh, so let me get started here. So this is our uh, sales manager dashboard um, that, that you saw before. Um, and on this dashboard, you see uh, different links to reports. You see different KPIs, et cetera. And in the top right corner, you're going to see the date range uh, section. So I can actually um, look at, uh, set the date ranges to uh, look at the company's performance for the entire year, for a month or a quarter. So I can set that up, and then all the, uh, the KPIs would adjust to, to, do, to those date ranges. Okay? So I'm scrolling down and I'm showing you the key performance indicators portlet. Uh, here you will see the basic information that the salespeople would like to see, sales, new opportunities, open estimates. And then there's a, there's a nice trend graph here that shows sales trends. And uh, this is a scorecard that's set up for this scroll, um, and you can see some of the uh, some of the major uh, major KPIs. The one that I really want to talk about is the varied clients, new versus returning, which is really important in the, during the time of crisis. Um, and it really indicates how well the business is doing. Um, uh, it, it's always it's always true to this that there needs to be a delicate balance uh, struck with regard to this indicator. It's important to uh, to retain the old customers, but it's also important to have healthy flow of new clients as well. Um, and this is that, that report uh, that shows you new customer sales that you can review, right? Um, and if you go back, um, I want to also show you uh, an interesting report. Um, So it's so these are these are all the shortcuts that are created. So I want to show you open sales orders, um, sales order by customer summary. So these are the sales orders by customer that are that are in the system. I can adjust the uh, the uh, the date range. And I can go back to that new 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 customer sales. Now this is a detail report that actually shows you the detail invoices for each customer. So these are all all of my new customers. So I can review all of that information here in one report for the designated date range. And lastly, I'm going to show you um, lastly I'm going to show you the uh, pipeline report. So I'm going to go to the report section. 
I'm going to show you the pipeline report. Uh, it's important for the sales organization or, or any organization to uh, to have that clear, as John mentioned, clear visibility to, to your sales pipeline. Uh, so in NetSuite, everything is in one place. You can actually see that very easily through the pipeline by customer report. So I wanted to show you this report. So this is my pipeline summary. And if I click on detail, I can actually show all my opportunities, quotes, uh, my probabilities, my projected totals, and the weighted totals based on that probability. So all of that information is available. So you can see that there's, uh, there's a good, good functionality on, on, uh, in the context of Salesforce automation. So we'll speed this up a bit now, and I want to show you uh, probably the most important role in the organization, and that's the CEO. And then um, I'll show you some of the, the, the dashboards and the KPIs that exist there. So if I log in, uh, log in as a CEO, I can see on a dashboard all the KPIs that pertain to, uh, to the CEO. They have a high level visibility of everything that's going on in the organization. So as you can see, they can track revenue expenses, they can see sales. In the top right, you'll see in a second, uh, there's a new customer versus existing customer chart that shows in one of the portlets. And I can see the sales for each category. So this is a weekly cash projection portlet. And here we'll see all the um, AR due, AR, ca AR cash received, APO'd. Uh, so we have a, a clear understanding of what's coming in and what's going out uh, for every week, which is invaluable. And it's in one place. We don't have to look around for it. Now, this is the most important uh, dashboard um, f within the organization because it has one single view on the entire organization, really. It's called board metrics, and it shows you comparative sales. It shows you various KPIs. Um, the ones that I will focus my attention uh, on um, are the um, really the profitability ratios. So right now what I did is I clicked on one of the amounts and actually brought me to the income statement. So one thing to, to understand, all of these KPIs are feeding from uh, the, your financials, so anything that's on your balance sheet, on your income statement, uh, is fed into these KPIs and scorecards. So all the information is live, right? And you can adjust these ratios and you can adjust the formulas uh, and everything is highly configurable, right? So now we'll talk about profitability ratios. Um, the first thing I want to uh, focus your attention on is the uh, debt to equity ratio. Um, so debt to equity ratio is calculating by dividing a company's total liabilities by its shareholders' equity. Um, it is an important metric as it reflects the ability of shareholder equity to cover all of the outstanding debts uh, in, the, in the event of business downturn, such as um, the one we're experiencing today. A high debt to equity ratio is often associated with high risk means that a company has been aggressive in financing its growth with debt. Um, our firm looks looks pretty good there. We've got 40% ratios. Now, what I'm doing is I'm hovering over the uh, debt to total assets. And you can see that uh, there is a formula in there that you can adjust. Uh, currently, you have uh, the formula uh, you know, adding up all the payables, credit balance, other current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and dividing dividing it by equity. But you can change these formulas if needed, right? So all of this is adjusted. You don't have to do anything on your site. You can just modify them and tweak them if needed. Um, now I want to discuss a little bit, so that's your net income. I want to discuss also uh, uh, receivables turnover, right? So the receivables turnover ratio, ratio measures the efficiency with which a company collects on their receivables or the credit it, it has extended to its customers. Uh, the ratio also measures how many times a company receivables are converted to cash in a period. Hence, higher ratios indicate the company is doing a good job 
in collecting cash. Um, just like Judd mentioned, the DSO is also a part of uh, day, sale, day sales outstanding is also a ratio that's covered here or the uh, KPI. Um, so this is the average number of days it takes credit sales to be converted into cash. Everything under 45 days is considered low, although this firm is kind of reaching that limit. And then lastly, the inventory turnover. Uh, inventory turnover provides, uh, provides an insight as to whether a company is managing its stock properly. The higher the inventory ratio, the better. High inventory ratio would mean that the company is selling their inventory quickly and that there's a healthy demand for their products. And it looks like our company's ratio is not that great. On average, it takes them 159 days to sell their inventory. And this is the formula that you can track right there for the inventory turnover calculation. All right, let me speed things up a little bit here. I'm going to focus my attention to some other reports that are interesting, uh, primarily cash flow statement. Uh, we need to see a positive cash flow, right, during the time of crisis. Um, so the companies must ensure that they're liquid, and the cash flow statement is the best indicator of that liquidity, right? So one thing I'm going to show in this report, I can uh, use different segments uh, to slice and dice my information. So here I'm using a profit center, which is class typically, and then I'm showing my income by, by class, by, by sales channel, right? And I can do the same uh, for, for expenses, right? Um, I can use a department and then, and then show, uh, show what's going on at the department level as well. I'm gonna show you the income statement. And I'm going to do the slicing and dicing by, by those two categories. So first the class. And then a department. All right. So that is really what I wanted to show you. All right. Well, uh, any questions from the panel? <laughs> yes, Elias. So we did have a question just a couple minutes ago, but uh, how are you able to determine whether a sale is from a new customer in NetSuite? So I saw I saw in, the, in your last screen that there was uh, on the board metrics there was new customers, but how specifically um, is the data populated in the first place like that? So um, it, it is. It, so everything is kind of powered by safe searches and reports, right? So uh, what what happens is uh, what you're doing is you're you're in your criteria of your reports and safe searches, you're uh, trying to see if if there are any other transactions, right, in the system, okay? And if if a transaction is the first transaction in the system, right, then this is a new customer and then you can tag a customer as a new customer. So that's the criteria that's used uh, to come up uh, with, with that answer, right? Whether sales is in your cell or not, right? So it's all in the criteria of the reports. Okay, and then a saved search is something that is pretty easy to be set up in NetSuite, right? Right, right. Um, and I talked about safe searches. They feed the KPIs that you saw earlier, but we also have reports, and you saw that as well. One thing that I didn't talk about are the, uh, the, the, the BI tools in NetSuite, and it's called Analytics Workbook. And that's the, the new generation uh, BI capability in NetSuite that you can use as well, which allows for seven, seven join, uh, seven uh, multiple joins, uh, talking to different tables and pulling that information into one single report. Got it. Okay. I think that is good for now. I think we can go ahead and uh, wrap up unless anyone else has any other questions. Feel free to, to post them in the chat box and we will get those answered. Oh, sorry, we do have one more question, Ilya. Uh -huh. What is the 
What is the name of the new BI tool in NetSuite called again? It's Analytics Workbooks. Okay. Analytics Workbooks. Right, and, and what they do is, uh, what it does, it creates various tables for you that you can show on your dashboard. Um, you can export that data set. Uh, you can query those workbooks through uh, REST web services. So there's a lot of things you can do with, uh, you can build pivot tables. So it's, it's very sophisticated. And one of the things that we do want to mention is that with NetSuite, if you are running a solution outside of NetSuite using REST or, uh, you know, any other type of API, you can bring that in and utilize that new BI tool to report on out-of-system metrics in addition to in-systems metrics, correct? Right, that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Any other questions awesome. from? Uh... No, I think we're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep speaking too soon. <laughs> um, can you show us information such as product portfolio profitability and how price increases to customer are, for example, annually applied? Okay, let me break 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 this down a little bit. So, product <laughs> profitability, yes, absolutely. Um, so a lot of these can be configured because there, there isn't uh, – so one thing that I didn't show, I didn't show you a gross uh, margin reporting. So you, you have that kind of out of the box. It was on one of the uh, KPIs on a sales manager portlet. Uh, so gross profitability, gross margin profitability uh, is out of the box uh, KPI. But it's very easy to uh, adjust that and customize it. And then remind me, what was the second part of that question? Um, the second part was, and how price increases to customers are, for example, annually applied. So, great question. So, uh, NetSuite has um, uh, various uh, various uh, pricing uh, models, right, uh, or functional pieces. So, we have price levels, we have uh, price lists, and we have price groups. So, if there's a change to uh, the customer pricing, you can take a price level and apply it to a specific customer, right? Uh, price levels are kind of across the board um, um, price uh, price structures, okay, that you can apply to multiple customers. But now if you want to fine tune something, you want to give a specific customer um, a unique price, okay, just for that item maybe or for that customer, then you have a price list. So you can go, you can create a, a, a unique price for the item and attach it to the customer record. So you can you can do that and you can update these via CSV imports as well. So it's very easy to do. So I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, no, I mean, that's helpful for now. We can always circle back with anyone afterwards and, and yes. answer all the questions yeah. that you have. There's and a we lot offer, uh, that we can cover thing, in this week, so. Yeah, one one thing that I didn't mention is that we offer these these workshops. If you if you guys want to, um, you know, reserve some time, maybe next week, and whenever you have the time, we can sit down and we can help you. Uh, we can have these one on one workshops together. Hey, why don't you kick it over to the next slide and let's talk about All that. Right. <laughs> All right, that's good. Hey, I'll make it really quick. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. As Ilya said, we are offering a free NetSuite workshop. Um, we use a methodology developed specifically to help you transition to NetSuite from other systems. And uh, the deliverables with this consist of a roadmap and a project plan that will serve as a blueprint to your project success. Um, you're only eligible, obviously, for this if you do not have NetSuite. If you have NetSuite currently and are looking for some help, We'd be happy to help you with that, but uh, it really doesn't make sense uh, unless you're putting in a, a new version of NetSuite. Um, as Ilya said, uh, this is free. I mean, we're calling it a workshop. It could be anything you want it to be. It's just a little time. Uh, oftentimes, people walk away from these things with more questions than answers. And what we're looking to do is to sit down and answer those questions. Uh, again, it is free. So we're, you know, we're not looking for you to pony up any money. What we want you to do is we want you uh, to feel like you've got a good understanding of NetSuite and how it can help you with your business. Uh, which brings us to the next slide, which is 
um, let's talk about getting together. Uh, we're located in outside of San Diego, but the truth is, is that pretty much, you know, everything's being done remotely. Uh, we're going to reach out to you later today um, or tomorrow with a copy of the webinar uh, so you can take a look at it again. You know, we covered a lot today and there were a lot shown in the uh, various demos we did. So we're going to send that out and then we'll probably follow up a couple times with you um, to see if you do have any other questions. So if you just want to reach out to us directly, here is our email and our phone number. Uh, and I, you know, I know it's kind of running late. Uh, we want to thank everybody again for joining us. Thank you, Olivia, and thank you, Olivia. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye.